are something really, really special. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Fabrizio Romano here as always to keep you posted on the transfer market. Today, guys, we touch on Ebere Chiez and his release close, his future, but also Rodrigo, something to say about Chelsea and also on Manchester United. Let's jump into it together. And so guys, let me start today's video by mentioning Ugo Viana, official, confirmed, the exclusive story is now reality. Manchester City have a new director of football, good luck to Ugo Viana, who did a fantastic job at Sporting, signing players like the big one, Victor Gjokeres, but also uh, Hulman from Lecce, also Diomande as a centre-back, so doing an excellent job at Sporting, together with the coach Ruben Amorim, and now... It's official, Ugo Viana starts his job at Manchester City as new director of football, replacing a legend of the game like Chiki Begiristain from the 1st of July. Now, from January to the summer, Ugo Viana will start having a good direct relationship with people at Manchester City and together also with Chiki Begiristain to start the transition in the best way possible and arrive in the summer already with the background of Manchester City, how it works at the club, how is the methods of Manchester City and so this is the plan. Good luck to Ugo Viana and good luck to Manchester United because we know it's a difficult moment. We had many rumors over the week, but Eric Ten Hag again and again is preparing the game against Brentford, fully focused on May United, so it looks like for this international break is all good and then waiting to see what's going to happen in the future for Eric Ten Hag. But they wanted to touch on something on the strategy of Manchester United because, of course, this summer we saw signings like Lenny Yoro, uh, Joshua Zierze, Manuel Ugarte, Nusair Masarawi. So my United were very busy with the uh, signings and important names. But also Manchester United started signing, uh, and these were two exclusive stories uh, I'm really proud of because I think these are two special talents. One is Seru Kone, the guy from Mali, midfielder, born in 2006. And the other one is Chidobi Martin, who decided to leave the academy of Arsenal to join Manchester United. Remember these two signings, not just them, because the indication I'm getting is that Ineos really want to build something for the future in terms of signing talents who are maybe not ready immediately for the first team. Chido B. Martin will take time before we see Chido having his debut in a Manchester United shirt. And also uh, for uh, Seru Kone, is going to take some time. Seru Kone is not ready yet, of course, but the potential is huge. The value in the deal is what made Manchester United decide, OK, let's go for this player. For example, in the, ca in the case of Kone, there was the strong interest of Ajax, the strong interest of a German club who wanted to sign the player, but May United were faster. So May United in the past, before this new era, with the new co-owner, Sir Jim Ratcliffe, they were missing on many opportunities with the scouting, uh, telling the board to sign the players, but Man United decided to go with different investments. We know Moises Caicedo when he was a kid, and we know many others who had the chance to be at Manchester United, and ended up joining other clubs. With Ineos, this won't happen again. This is the message of the club. They want to sign talents, talents with potential, and so Chidobi Martin, Kone, but May United are already working for more signings like this. Players with potential, with a big value for the future. And so, remember the new strategy of Manchester United, because this is going to be part of the revolution. Obviously, it's going to take some time. Who is already investing on young talents is Chelsea. And uh, Chelsea signed a very interesting player this summer. Many of them, of course. We several times spoke about Estevao and others. But... Chelsea are very proud also with another signing, and it's Mike Penders, the goalkeeper who joined from Genk, uh, born in 2005. Why Chelsea, even if they have many goalkeepers at the club, decided to invest big on Mike Penders? First of all, because the feedbacks they had on this goalkeeper are something really, really special. So they consider him the new Thibaut Courtois in Belgium. Chelsea had a fantastic, fantastic report on him. Every single time uh, their people were watching and following the player, but also, they knew that in case they wanted to wait and take some time, there were more clubs interested in Mike Penders. For example, Bayern. Bayern were scouting and following Mike Penders, then they are uh, planning for something different. They also have Nubel for the future, so in this moment Bayern decided not to invest on the player. It was just a scouting activity, but Bayern scouts were several times in attendance to follow Mike Penders. So Chelsea wanted to be fast and Chelsea believed they got an important talent for the future, a top goalkeeper like Mike Penders. Remember, he will join in 2025. Then, guys, I wanted to touch on two offensive players who are always in the rumors. Let me, first of all, clarify 
clarify something on Rodrigo Goes. We always have rumors. I saw also over this international break on Rodrigo, many stories, many things. Rodrigo, full focus, guys, is on Real Madrid. Rodrigo extended his contract at Real Madrid one year ago because his feeling is very clear. He wants to play for Real Madrid. He wants to succeed at Real Madrid. He wants to feel an important player for Real Madrid. He loves Real Madrid. So Rodrigo is absolutely not planning today for any change. Then in the future, we can't predict that. We will see. But Today, Rodrigo is not planning any change. In the summer, we had rumors Rodrigo can leave, Rodrigo can go to Manchester City, this and that. Rodrigo was never considering an exit from Real Madrid in the summer. Full focus on Real Madrid. Last summer, full focus on Real Madrid now. So, trust me, Rodrigo is not planning any change. Then, what happens in the future? We will see. But today, Rodrigo is completely, fully focused on Real Madrid. Full focus on Crystal Palace for a top player, Ebene Chiesa, the CEO the chairman, sorry, of uh, Crystal Palace, uh, Steve Parrish, said, I can't understand how it's possible that clubs didn't arrive to pay the close and sign is in the summer. Uh, he had obviously a great season at Crystal Palace and now was not an easy start of the season for Palace but Eze remains an important player obviously for them and an important player on the market for 2025 because several clubs are keeping close eye to Ebene Chiesa. We know he's always been appreciated by Tottenham. Uh, we know several other clubs have been scouting him including Manchester United. Man United want to invest on a winger in 2025. They've not decided who he's going to be so let's wait. Let's see what happens but for sure Eze is one of the players uh, they have been scouting. Again among many others, so I'm not, gay. I'm not saying that he's uh, the only one or he's the priority target, but for sure Eze is a player appreciated around England. The release clause will be still there for summer 25. Is a release clause in the region of 60 million pounds. We know how complicated are the clauses at Crystal Palace every single time. We saw that with uh, Michael Olise, but for sure Eze will have a release clause and the clause has an important detail. The main part of the payment has to be done up front. So any club interested in Ebene Chiesa and knows that they have to pay big amount, big part of the uh, redisclose of Ebene Chiesa in advance, up front. So this is a crucial point. This is why, for example, some clubs interested like Tottenham last summer decided to invest on a different position. Solanke and so to invest on two players worth 60, uh, 65 millions was probably too expensive in that moment. But at the same time, all these clubs keep following, keep tracking Ebene Chiesa. So for sure, he could be an interesting one to follow in summer 2025. Now, the full focus is on Crystal Palace. Let's respect Palace in this story. Let's give them, obviously, the time to develop the player, to enjoy the player. But the future could be in a super top club. For the best and so guys, let me know your thoughts on all these stories. Uh, Ugo Viana, Man City, Manchester United, Revolution, trusting talents for the future. Mike Penders, Chelsea, good choice or not for the club. Rodrigo Goes, Real Madrid, what's your feeling on that? And then Eze, which club should go for him? Let me know here in comments. Remember to like this video, turn on the notification bell, subscribe to the channel. See you soon with Fabrizio. Ciao.